Today I want to talk about controlling grubs in your lawn. Uh, and I'm not talking about wait until you start seeing the damage. I'm talking about early season prevention. I personally have lost a yard, an expensive yard, two grubs. And today I want to show you one of the easiest and cheapest ways to take care of this problem before it becomes a problem. This is Ike's, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> this is Ike's Lawn Grub Control. I ordered this from Home Depot. It's a 32 ounce, you know, a one quart bottle. <coughs> and it cost about $40, depending on where you live, you know, what kind of state taxes you have. And it was free shipping to the store. This is not something you're going to, you're going to pick up on the shelf probably but you can order it from Home Depot. And it doesn't take much to take care of these grubs. Um, I can show you the label here in a minute, but right on the front of it, the front label says covers up to 64,000 square feet. So if you've got a 10,000 square foot lawn, this one bottle could give you 10 applications if you follow the label. And uh, at $40 a bottle, and that, that's a pretty cheap treatment. If you've only got 5,000 square feet alone, that's an even better bargain for you. You can get over 10 treatments. Okay, let me turn this around and we'll, we'll talk about the label. The active ingredient in this uh, Ike's grub control is imidacloprid. And it kills a lot more than just grubs. This is also a termiticide, good for carpet rants and a lot of other things. However, the application rates for certain bugs is different than what we're going to talk about today. Uh, if you're interested in grub control, then what you need to do is go to page 24 on the label. Although I do recommend you read the entire label as boring as it is. And you're going to see a couple of things. You're going to see a, a dilution rate. That means how much of this product are you going to mix with water to take care of these pests. And grubs are listed here. It says larva of, and it lists all kinds of beetles. So th those are your grubs. It says between uh, 0.46 and 0.6 fluid ounces. So may as well say a half ounce per gallon of water. All right. So that's your dilution rate half ounce per gallon of water, your application rate is going to be one gallon of diluted product per thousand square feet. Okay, so in other words, a half ounce of this product mixed with a gallon of water will treat 1,000 feet, 1,000 square feet of lawn. Another way to say that is that if you just put one ounce of the Ike's grub control mixed with two gallons of water, you can cover 2,000 square feet. Does that make sense? Okay, that's going to be important for the next step. The next thing I want to talk about is the equipment you're going to need to make this as easy as possible. And I'm using an ortho dial and spray. You can get this at Home Depot, Walmart. Lowe's, you know, any place that would sell outdoor stuff is probably going to have a hose and sprayer like this. And uh, what I like about the ortho dial and spray is that it's just so simple, even though it looks complicated. All you have to do is add your one ounce of Ike's grub killer and into this jug and fill this jug up with water and then attach it to the device. And if you spray this until this jug is empty, you would have put out two gallons of water, two gallons of diluted mixture. Okay, does that make sense? Let me hook it up and I'll show you a little bit more about that. This dial and spray uh, container is going to attach to the sprayer just like that. You'll twist it around clockwise to tighten it up. 
And I'll be the first to admit, this is not the easiest thing I ever screwed together. I don't know why they didn't field test this a little bit, but uh, because it seems like you can over tighten it and then it just skips threads. Or if you don't tighten it enough, it'll fall off. And you can't turn it upside down to see what you're doing because this is going to be full of your liquid. All right, let me show you the proper way to add the product to the container. This, the hose is already turned on, but nothing's coming out because you have to pull the trigger to make water come out of it. I recommend go ahead and fill this thing up maybe halfway, at least a third of the way with water. I got it about halfway full because you don't want to add raw chemical to an empty jug, it'll tend to uh, stick to the sides and you may not be able to get it diluted properly. Hope that makes sense. Okay, I'm fighting with this camera on my head. So hopefully I, we can do this and still make sense. The Ike grub control comes with uh, two openings on it. The one that slants is graded half ounce, one ounce, and two ounce. And all you have to do is roll that thing around until the grated side gets full of chemical, that little section of it, and then just turn it back until you can bring the amount of chemical down to what you want. So right now, I've got the chemical at the one ounce level. All right, then we're gonna put this into the jug. And remember, I've already got some water in the jug. Just pour that. So now we've got one ounce of chemical in the ortho dialing spray. Always put your cap back on your, on your product because you don't want that to get kicked over by a kid or something. All right, now we'll go ahead and fill this up with water. You don't want to do it too fast because it'll start foaming up. Now for the tricky part. Insert your filter. And then very nimbly twist this thing clockwise until you feel the threads catch. And then it looks like I'm twisting this thing a hundred times, but there. You, you'll know when, when you got it. It won't fall off. And that's all there is to getting the chemical in there. You want to give it a good shake to mix, mix it up good. And now we're just about ready to go to town. Determine that we have one ounce of Ike's Rib Killer into this jug. Don't worry about how much water is in this jug. This ortho is only going to spray out two gallons. You'll see some controls, uh, some di a dial over here on the port side of the ortho sprayer. It's, this can be complicated. Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter what setting you have it on. It's, it's still only going to put out two gallons of liquid from this jug being full to where the jug is empty. The only difference this dial makes is how fast it comes out. So I've got mine set right now on about five ounces. That's because I walk at a moderate pace. If you're a speed walker, you might want to turn that up to six or eight ounces. Or if you're an old feeble guy, like some people claim I am, turn it way on down, you know, to two ounces or something like that. But five ounces seems to be a comfortable walking rate for me. All right, so I know I'm, I want to spray this entire jug over a 2,000 square foot area. Let's see how we can figure out what 2,000 square feet is. Doing simple math, we know that 2,000 square feet would be a rectangle 10 foot wide and 200 foot long. But most people's yard is not shaped that way. So doing simple math, 
and if this is confusing, talk to your teenager. 2,000 square foot could also be something 40 foot wide by 50 foot long, right? 40 times 50 is 2,000. So what we want to do is step off an area that kind of meets that criteria. For instance, right here, I'm going to go from my front porch out to the road and see how far that is. You can take big steps, medium steps. You know, just kind of determine how far your pace is. And once you walk that off, you can say, oh, okay, that was 15 paces. Or maybe for other people, it might be 18 paces. But we're just going to say, for me, this is between 40 and 50 feet. Because I didn't even count it. I just know what it is because I've measured my yard so many times before. So now we need to get the other, the other measurement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, if I was taking three foot steps, that would be forty-five feet. Uh, I don't think I'm taking quite three feet. I think I'm probably taking less than 30 inches per step. So we'll just go a couple more paces and say that I'm going to go from my front porch over to that oak tree, down to the, to the driveway, and along the driveway till I get past this old stump here. And that's going to be approximately 2,000 square feet. Let's get spraying. You can go on YouTube and you can see people talking about this ortho, ortho dial and spray and they love to put eight ounces of product in there. I'm telling you the easiest way. If your label says use one ounce of chemical per thousand square feet, just put one ounce in there, fill it up and just do a thousand square feet. But in this case, it says a half ounce per thousand. So we put a whole ounce in there and we're going to do 2,000 square feet with this. Keep it agitated and then just start spraying. Keep an eye on it, you know. When, when you're about halfway done, you should still have, have about half of the stuff left in the, you know, left, left in the jug. Okay, I'm gonna untangle my hose from up there so I can finish this this application and I'll be right back. We don't you don't need to watch me take every step of this. I can easily cover a 10 foot wide path just by waving this thing back and forth. And if you get to the end of your rectangle and you still got a bunch of product left in the jug, go ahead and turn around and finish spraying it. You know, you want to make sure you get enough down. Or if you get halfway done with your rectangle and you've used up all your product, you might need to turn that dial down a little bit to a lower, lower rate. The whole key is to get the one ounce of rib killer over a 2,000 square foot section. And yeah, I know there's going to be people out there and say, hey man, a simpler way is to you know, put eight ounces in there and dial it to such and such. I'm just trying to keep this real simple. Real simple for people like me who, who don't cipher very accurately. Okay. 2,000 square feet. 
and all I got left in that jug is just a little bit of chemical and I, I could spray for another 10 minutes and not empty any more out of that jug. You can see my hose started leaking a little bit because I was twisting and turning. So personal protection, you know, rubber gloves, that's important when you're handling chemicals. Uh, I probably should be wearing a long sleeve shirt, but I'm just stupid. I do have rubber boots on. So take care of yourself. All right. Let's get to the next part of this deal. I think we can agree that that was a pretty simple process with this Ike's long grub control. And this stuff kills a lot of other things. But uh, we're mostly concerned with grubs for this, this video. It took just a couple of minutes to uh, dump, dump one ounce of product into the ortho dialing spray. And maybe two minutes, less than three minutes to spray a 2,000 square foot area. And trust me, that was a lot easier than pushing a spreader around with granules. Although I do love granules, and we will be using some uh, in the fall. All right, let me get a sprinkler hooked up because there's something else we need to do next. Our next step is going to be to uh, irrigate our yard. Uh, we're not looking for too much water. We just want to... Uh, make sure that the product we just applied with the ortho dollar spray actually gets down to the dirt. Uh, think of Ikes as being something you need to use to paint your soil. Now in my case, since I started this yard last September, I don't have a lot of thatch or I do not have grass with bare soil anyhow. So it's not going to take me very long to, uh, to get enough product enough water down to make my soil damp. Uh, if you have a real thick yard with a lot of thatch, you might have to run a sprinkler for five, ten minutes. And it depends on what kind of sprinkler you're using. These four-league gig type sprinklers, this cheap one I got from Target, man, it throws out some water in a hurry. Usually I can get my yard wet in about three minutes with that. Whereas this, uh, this fan type sprinkler, also by Gilmore, they made both these products, uh, sends out a fine spray, covers a larger area, but it takes longer for your ground to get wet. So with the Whirly Gig, I'm going to be moving it more often. Uh, with this, I don't have to move it as often, but I got to leave it in place, you know, longer. All right, let me go turn on the water and we'll get started if you don't want to water your yard with you know a, a garden hose uh, just watch your weather report if you're expecting a you know rain shower tonight say a tenth of an inch quarter of an inch hey that's perfect go ahead and get your stuff down today now if, if you were expecting a tropical storm to come through with four or five inches of rain don't waste your money you, you don't want to put that stuff out and then have it washed away, you know, within within a few hours. You know, just use common sense about that. But you do want to make sure that uh, it doesn't just stay on the tips of your grass blades. You want to get it down towards the uh, roots a little bit. All right, let's turn this on. This is my irrigation pond. I've been doing this project all morning, so I don't have very much water left in it. It's a ram pump down in the creek. Let's get her cranked up. Whoops. Problem. My darn whirly gig sprinkler busted a gasket. I had my hose I tangled up in it. Let, let me change that real quick. This is my favorite part of the operation because it's fun. And I can sit on my porch and drink a beer. This is a good excuse to drink a beer on a Saturday afternoon. 
Okay, you can see how much water is coming out of that rotary type sprinkler. Not all rotary type sprinklers. When I say rotary, I mean whirly gig. Spins around and around. They're not all the same. I like this Gilmore because it's got a hole right in the center that uh, it gives you really good coverage. But there's a lot of water coming out of that thing. Let me turn on this uh, fan spray type deal and show you the difference. Here we go, getting some pressure built up in it. The hose was empty when I started. All right, I mean, this is pretty too. But it's a real fine mist, unlike the Whirly Gig that has big droplets. This is a little fine droplets. But you don't have to get up out of your chair as often with this. Both of them are doing the same thing. You just want to get enough water down to where it wets the soil. We're not talking about like using granules where you need to put a half inch of water on top of the granule. No, this stuff is already liquid. Just make sure you get some down to the ground. Yeah, this is a lot of fun here and it's so easy. This imidacloprid is an outstanding product. Back when I was working in pest control, we used it to treat termites. Don't just take that at face value. Read the label if you're going to use it for termites. The uh, dilution rate and application rate is a lot different than treating turf grass. But anyhow, uh, it's a systemic type uh, poison. It can get in that grass and the grass will absorb it and go down to the roots. And if something starts chewing on those roots, they're going to die. Also, you know, if something crawls through it, they're going to get it on them. So, so this is like just about every way you can think of that it's going to be working for you. And it's really hard to mess up. Unless you get your hose wrapped around your sprinkler arms and jerk on it and it pulls it off. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let this go for just a few minutes. And then I'm going to move the hoses down. Uh, maybe another five or, five or ten feet just to make sure I, I get this 2,000 square foot wet. I recently got a quote from a, a local lawn service to see what the rates were for treating grubs early in the season. And the quote I got was for about 10,000 square feet, it's going to cost you 65 to 75 dollars. And so that sounded like a pretty good price. I'm sure there's some companies that would charge a lot more than that. I know when I was spraying yards, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch the job for less than $100. But uh, with this Ike's, you know, you're looking at $38 to $42 for a bottle that will treat 64,000 square feet. You're only going to pay about tenth of the price that a company would charge to come do the same thing. And you have more fun doing it yourself. I mean, it's really not complicated at all. So don't apply this stuff if you just had a heavy rain. You know, you, you want to be able to get this chemical down to the ground. You don't want to apply it to a flooded yard. And in the same vein, you don't want to uh, put this stuff down if you're expecting a very, very heavy rain within 24 hours. But you do have to apply some water to it within 24 hours of application just to make sure it gets down where it can do the, the most. All right, I hope that was helpful. And cheap, easy, quick way. Take care of your pre-season grubs. And this ought to be good for a few months. There are limits as to how much of this you can put on your yard in a year. Uh, I think it's like 27 ounces per acre in a 12-month period. So don't think if you got a small yard, you're going to use up the whole bottle the first season. Uh, one, one bottle could last you years, depending on how, how big a yard is. 
this will probably be the only application of liquid I make this season because starting in September, I like to use granules. I, I love that bare 24-hour grub kill. That is so good. I've even done a video on it. In parting, I just want to say that there's no strict rule as to when you need to do this early season application. Depends on where you live. Uh, just think about your June bugs. You know, those beetles, Japanese beetles and stuff like that that come swirling around in the summer. They look like hornets buzzing around out in your yard. Uh, that's what starts the whole problem. So in my area, I live in central North Carolina. I would say sometime between Mother's Day and Father's Day is a good time to go ahead and get your early season application out. If you live in Georgia, Florida, Texas, you might want to start this back in April. Yeah. I wouldn't put it down in the wintertime because the grubs would be too deep to really come in contact with the product. So this is going to take care of all those little baby larvae that get hatched out here in the next few months. And then for the kicker, I'll put that Bayer, or I think they call it Bio Advance now instead of Bayer, but the 24-hour grub kill. That, that stuff works magic just in case this doesn't kill everything. Okay, hope this was helpful. Signing off.